Welcome to NAMM's Believe in Music. I'm Craig Anderton, President of the MIDI Association, and we'll be taking a look at how MIDI 2.0 simplifies configuring a system and improves workflow. But first, let's start with some background on MIDI 2.0. In 1983, musical instrument companies around the world banded together to create a visionary specification. MIDI 1.0, the first universal musical instrument digital interface. Its ability to join computers, music, and the arts has become an essential part of live performance, recording, smartphones, and even stage lighting. Now, MIDI 2.0 takes the specification much further while retaining backward compatibility with the MIDI 1.0 gear and software already in use. Let's explore why MIDI 2.0 is the biggest advance in music technology in decades. MIDI 1.0 messages went in one direction, from a transmitter to a receiver. MIDI 2.0 is bi-directional and transforms MIDI from a monologue to a dialogue. For example, with the new MIDI CI, Capability Inquiry Messages, MIDI 2.0 devices can talk to each other and auto-configure themselves to work together. They can also exchange information on functionality, which is key to backward compatibility. MIDI 2.0 gear can find out if a device doesn't support MIDI 2.0. It then simply communicates using MIDI 1.0 messages. To deliver an unprecedented level of nuanced musical and artistic expressiveness, MIDI 2.0 reimagines the role of performance controllers. These are what translate human performance gestures to data that computers can understand. Controllers are now easier to use, and there are more of them. Over 32,000 controllers, including controls for individual notes. Enhanced 32-bit resolution gives controls a smooth, continuous analog feel. New note-on options have been added for articulation control and precise note pitch. In addition, dynamic response, as set by the velocity parameter, has been upgraded too. What's more, major timing improvements in MIDI 2.0 can apply to MIDI 1.0 devices. In fact, some MIDI 1.0 gear can even retrofit some MIDI 2.0 features. MIDI gear can now have profiles that dynamically configure a device for a particular application. If a control surface queries a device with a mixer profile, then the controls will map to faders, pan pots, and other mixer parameters. But with a drawbar organ profile, that same control surface can map its controls automatically to virtual drawbars and other keyboard parameters, or map to dimmers if the profile is a lighting controller. This saves setup time, improves workflow, and eliminates tedious manual programming. While profiles set up an entire device, property exchange messages provide specific, detailed information sharing. These messages can discover, retrieve, and set many properties like preset names, individual parameter settings, and unique functionalities. Basically, everything a MIDI 2.0 device needs to know about another MIDI 2.0 device. For example, your recording software could display everything you need to know about a hardware synthesizer on screen, such as preset names, parameter values, and more. This brings the same kind of instant recall associated with software synthesizers to hardware synthesizers. MIDI 2.0 is the result of a global, decade-long development effort. Unlike MIDI 1.0, which was initially tied to a specific hardware implementation, a new universal MIDI packet format makes it easy to implement MIDI 2.0 on any digital transport, like USB or Ethernet. And to enable future applications that we can't envision today, there's ample space reserved for brand new MIDI messages. MIDI will continue to serve musicians, DJs, producers, educators, artists, and hobbyists, anyone who creates, performs, learns, and shares music and artistic works for decades to come. And now, Mike Kent from MK2 Audio introduces MIDI Capability Inquiry, or MIDI CI, the basis of how MIDI 2.0 devices can communicate and interact with each other. MIDI Capability Inquiry is the first uh, foundation of MIDI 2.0. And the fundamental idea is that if two devices agree, then we can do new things with MIDI. 
If two devices say, hey, do you do the new things? And the, and the guy answers, yes, great. If it's no, you just continue to use MIDI 1.0 as we've always done, uh, no change. And so this foundation specification is called MIDI CI. MIDI CI has three Ps in it, uh, profile configuration, property exchange, and protocol negotiation. Brandon Ryan with Nutrix the Synth Guy explains why MIDI 2.0's two-way dialogue is a big improvement over MIDI 1.1's monologue. Oftentimes MIDI 1.0 is, is, is uh, characterized as a monologue where MIDI 2.0 is a dialogue so you can get an answer from a piece of hardware and then that maybe DAW might configure it, pull up a patch list that it knows is in that piece of hardware, um, already you know, set up the controllers. Profiles, as explained next by Mike Kent, take advantage of two-way communications to standardize messages among devices of a similar type. This is all part of automatic, hassle-free configuration. So profile is auto configuration. Two devices agree to use a predetermined set of messages. So what does that do for us? Consider the case of a drawbar organ. Many of us have seen a Hammond organ. It's got nine drawbars on it. Here's three different drawbar organs, and none of them potentially use the same messages to control the nine drawbars. So by introducing a profile, a device can say to another device, what profiles do you understand? And that other device at the other end will say, I understand the organ profile. And then the, each device can switch to using that profile and then Drawbar number 16 is using a common message for all three of these devices um, across all manufacturers. So we, uh, through MIDI CI, we ask the question, do you support the drawbar organ profile? And then we enable it once we find out that the, the device is uh, supporting it. There's a number of different uh, profiles, three different profile types. The first one is instrument profiles. So all acoustic pianos have very similar traits, and so we can draw, write a, a profile specification for a piano or an organ or electric pianos, drum sets, and so on. So these are instrument profiles. We expect to develop profiles for all kinds of effects. And then feature profiles. Uh, orchestral articulation, for example, is the first on the list. That might be common to different uh, types of synthesizers. Uh, or, or maybe something like uh, a pitch profile where you understand microtonal tuning or something like that. So these are feature profiles. So three different types of profiles that allow this auto configuration. A DAW could, could ask a, a synthesizer, what profiles do you do? And then automatically configure and map uh, controllers for that type of uh, profile. That's the, the goal there. Next up, MIDI Association COO Athan Billius demonstrates a practical example of MIDI profiles. We have a VR09, which is also the firmware has been updated to um, support profiles, and a YC Yamaha organ. The two of these devices both feature nine drawbars for organ control, and they will be controlling a YC3B Yamaha VST synth. So we'll show you how all of that works. On the left-hand side, we have the soft synth that is connected by USB uh, to the reface. And as you'll notice, when I move the faders here, nothing happens. And that's because I need to turn the profile on. This firmware has been updated, so when I move this all the way down, it enables the profile. Now I have control. Turn the profile off. No control. Turn the profile on. Control. Pretty neat, right? Um, and then on the other side, we've done the same thing with the VR09. If I get in here and press two buttons, the profile is enabled. I can go in, move the drawbars. I can turn the profile off. No control. And now I have control. set up here is we have the CS, it is connected by a 5-pin DIN MIDI to the monologue. The volume on the CS is down, so what you're hearing when I play here is actually the sound of the monologue. This slider over here in the up position is profile off, so when I move the sliders here, 
If I go and I turn profile on, then all of a sudden, now I'm controlling the monologue from the CS. Now we can do it the other way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the volume of the monologue and turn up the volume of the CS. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press a button here to turn the profile on. So now I am able to play. And I'm controlling the CS from the monologue. So what we've done here is we've enabled a profile in two directions connected by 5-pin MIDI. So in, um, in, a, in the profile, you have an initiator and you have a responder. And so we've shown that in two directions using 5-pin DIN MIDI. Property Exchange is what discovers information about devices. It's an effective get and set mechanism that is a key element in streamlining workflow. Andrew Mee, who consults to Yamaha on MIDI 2.0, shows how Property Exchange works in the real world. Before I start, let's look at the state of things today. When you open your digital audio workstation of choice, you can choose any number of soft synths that talk to and from the DAW. Choose a sound, play some notes, move a slider and record the result. Play it back. Easy. No need to know the MIDI channel, map the controllers or jump to the MIDI device to choose the right patch. Property Exchange now makes this seamless for MIDI devices too. Bought a synth? Go to download the editor, find that there's no mobile support, or the latest operating system update has broken the application, or there was never a version for your operating system in the first place. You find that there's no plugin built into the DAW. Property Exchange now makes this in-depth control operating system agnostic and future-proofed. You open a recording session and you want your hardware to be exactly like it was when you were last working on it, restoring a snapshot of its exact settings. Property Exchange now makes all of this possible, and it does so by using a common language that not only DAWs can understand, but workstations, mixing desks, and other hardware can also understand. Property Exchange is part of the new MIDI 2 ecosystem that now creates a dialogue between different MIDI devices. Let's not just look at this in theory, let's look at a real life example. For this demonstration, I'm using the Groove Sizer TB2 Quartet, a two oscillator synth based on an Arduino Ju. It allows you to edit the parameters using the five pots and buttons on the front. Most importantly, the code is open source and has allowed me to retrofit property exchange into TB2. The second half of this demonstration is the MIDI Workbench, a MIDI 2 compliance and testing tool. Think of the workbench as the role a DAW or an advanced hardware controller would play. To state the obvious, the MIDI workbench has no previous knowledge about the TB2, there is no special code, each site only understands MIDI CI messages and property exchange. After a MIDI CI discovery, we retrieve the details about the MIDI device. Property exchange provides me to see the current MIDI channels in use, with the current patch name. On each channel, you can choose the current program from a list retrieved from the device. Property Exchange also allows the workbench to know the list of controllers the TP2 understands. No more digging through documentation to manually map controls. MIDI 2.0 products are slated to appear in 2021, and some MIDI 2.0 features could appear as firmware updates to existing products. However, as Brandon Ryan points out, other support elements need to be in place for widespread adoption. Some of the things that need to be supported is that, you know, the, the operating systems, the DAWs, all, every part of the chain needs to kind of support this. And they may support certain aspects of MIDI 2 and not others. So an important thing for people to understand about MIDI 2.0 is that it's kind of an umbrella of things, attributes and improvements. MIDI 2.0 is already reality for developers. For example, if you want to develop a MIDI 2.0 compatible soft synth, including per note controllers and increased resolution, simply use the VST3 SDK from Steinberg. You don't need anything to support this in VST3. You can build uh, your instruments using the existing VST3 SDK. You, you don't have to do anything. As soon as MIDI uh, 2 will be supported by uh, Cubase, then it will work. As long as you make use of the features of uh, VST3, which are note expression and the increased resolution and so on. As to the future, Apple, 
Microsoft, and Google have all participated in the MIDI Association during the development of MIDI 2.0, so we expect future operating system updates to include MIDI 2.0 capabilities. Once this type of support is in place, then music software companies can provide a wider implementation across a system that integrates MIDI 1.0 and 2.0 devices. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has impacted development schedules, so while products will likely start rolling out in 2021, it will probably take two to three years for widespread adoption. Fortunately, though, MIDI 2.0's strict emphasis on backward compatibility means we can keep using MIDI 1.0 devices of all kinds and integrate MIDI 2.0 gear as it becomes available according to our needs. For the latest MIDI news, discussions, videos, and a monthly newsletter, join the MIDI Association. It's free to individuals involved in any aspect of music, technology, and the arts. Also, corporate membership is open to any commercial entity that designs, develops, or produces products that use MIDI technology. For more information, visit MIDI.org.